Hello, I'm Isabella Martinez Lugo. And I'm Caden Scow. And we represent Team 19058, working on the perfusion control system for bioreactors. Our sponsor is the Center for Applied Nanobioscience and Medicine, or ANBM. Mentored by Catherine Merrill, our team utilized the Agile method to design and create a custom module for ANBM. This poster board summarizes our team's efforts throughout the school year and demonstrates the results gathered from the verification process. Traditionally, this poster board would be used as the main visual for our design day presentation. However, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, our virtual design day presentation consists of this slide set, which covers the material presented on the design day poster board. Our sponsor came to us with the desire to improve their current testing apparatus for the human microbial crosstalk also known as Humix. Up until now, AMBM has been using a bulky incubator to create an environment suitable for the growth of mammalian cells. Despite its large size, this incubator is really not appropriate for performing multiple experiments. Increasing the number of incubators housed in AMBM's facility is very impractical and another solution was needed. In response to this situation, our project has been focused on providing a system that matches the control systems of the incubator while doubling the throughput of the system and decreasing the overall size of the unit. To design such a product, it was crucial that the functionalities presented in the incubator were still available. Functionality such as thermal control and CO2 concentration control was vital for the PCS. On account of the system being designed to operate in ANBM's facility, which is kept at approximately 21 degrees Celsius, environmental performance was also a factor at play. Our sponsor emphasized the difficulty biologists have had performing Humix experiments using their incubator and wanted the PCS to allow for the user to have easy access to materials housed inside as well as the ability to view the bioreactor without disturbing the cell environment. After initial meetings with our sponsor at their facility, our team settled on the functional requirements displayed on screen. To articulate these requirements in a formal and verifiable fashion, we quantified the functional requirements into single, verifiable shall statements. Those shall statements are the system requirements for the PCS, which are listed on this slide. To ensure that the functionality of the incubator was still present, requirements CO2, measurement, temperature, and volume were created. To ensure the transition to a less cumbersome process for the user, requirements simultaneous, visibility, setup, and disassembly were created. By combining these requirements together into a format that the user can interact with, we get the system block diagram. The system block diagram for the PCS demonstrates, from a system level, how the PCS components interface with one another, the user, and the environment. We would like to note that the fidget may not be utilized by ANBM. The Fidget Hub provided a platform for measuring temperature at multiple points in the system at once. It was primarily used for testing and verification purposes and is not necessary for the PCS to function properly. The physical manifestation of this diagram is the final as-built iteration of our PCS. The finished module is composed of an acrylic shell whose interior is lined with polyisocyanurate insulation boards. The module supports a tray design, which will be implemented by A and BM in order to house two bioreactors within the module. The tray features circular cutouts, which allow for the fan to circulate the module's air as it would without the tray's presence. The CO2 subsystem is comprised of a CO2 input solenoid, a relay, and a pressure regulator. The thermal subsystem is comprised of a heating plate, a thermal couple, a PID controller, and a small computer fan. The requirements verified for the final deliverable are CO2, measurement, temperature, and visibility. The Agile methodology used for this project allowed us to have scrum meetings to flesh out what work the team needed to do for each sprint. Our team used Jira, Google Drive, and Box to collaborate on documents and keep track of our work and data collection. At CDR, our team developed our first prototype, the Minimum Viable Product, or MVP. The goal of this iteration was to select the fewest system requirements that, when implemented, would achieve the highest value for our sponsor. We aimed to provide the functionality of the following core system requirements, CO2, measurement, and temperature. Since these requirements were now verified, we focused our ISR iteration on updating the module's appearance and verifying the visibility requirement. With those four requirements successfully verified, we turned to FAR, prepared to test the remaining requirements, volume, simultaneous, setup, and disassembly.
We continued the design process by making design trades. We chose a box design for our incubator when analyzed against other design options. Other trade studies were performed, which led to the CDR design, a polystyrene box sealed with duct tape, save for electronic and gas inlets. At CDR, the CO2 measurement and temperature requirements were verified via a series of thermal and CO2 tests. The ability for the module to both reach and maintain the desired characteristics was evaluated, and the team determined the PCS passed all currently developed system requirements. Following CDR, our sponsor presented us with more possible use cases which guided design modifications of the module. An acrylic shell lined with polyisocyanurate replaced the EPS. The hinged door featuring the viewing window allowed the team to verify the visibility requirement. The same thermal and CO2 verification methods from CDR were used to verify that the changes to the module's design did not affect the module's ability to meet the previously verified requirements. Unfortunately, the module was unable to heat up and stabilize within the allotted 15 minutes and thus did not pass system requirement 4.4.2 temperature. The design process following ISR was heavily affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The team was able to make minor physical adjustments to the module, such as adding an input hole for nitrogen, before the team was no longer allowed to collaborate in person. The only documentation change after ISR adjusted the verification requirement for 4.4.2 temperature, granting a passing score where it had previously failed. The team had previously planned to verify the remaining system requirements at ANBM's facility, but the universities and the state of Arizona's social distancing measure made this impossible. ANBM agreed to accept our ISR deliverable, along with the minor updates and data collected from the 24-hour test as the FAR deliverable. Our team is also leaving ANBM with an instruction set of how to verify the remaining system requirements should they desire to do so in the future. This includes directions to adjust source code, PID control values, and troubleshoot any components which can cause issues if not properly prepared. This is the System Requirement Verification Matrix. It tabulates and summarizes all information regarding system requirements that the team was able to verify. All system requirements that went through the verification process were given a passing grade by our team. Although our senior design experience turned out to be very different than what we imagined, our team's flexibility and honest communication allowed us to work through unforeseen obstacles. We now present our PCS, an acrylic module with polyisocyanurate insulation designed to regulate temperature and CO2 values, utilize a tray design, and supersede the use of an incubator. Thank you very much for your time. We will be available for questions on April 30th. We wish ANBM the best, and we thank them and our mentor for assisting us along this journey. Thank you very much for your time. We will be available on April 30th for questions. We appreciate this amazing opportunity and wish ANBM the very best in the future.